Well, hello everyone. What is going on? It is the Almighty Jeff, and we're here with episode 33 of Red Dead Redemption 2. In the previous episode, we did a little exploration outside of Horseshoe Overlook, including the little abandoned town of Limpany. And in the process, we managed to pick up, um, what was it? So we got a new rock carving, uh, a new wind catcher, and some bits and pieces as well. And finished up by completing A Strange Kindness, which was the final mission in Chapter 2, which had us scouting out for a new camp with Charles and in the process bumping into a German family who'd been separated by some bandits, so we had to rush over to where we ended up staying, which is Clemens Point, and finding a husband who'd been kidnapped and then bringing him back to his missus. And all was right with the world. We all moved in nice and easy. Uh, just before I forget, I can show you I managed to get gold on that. Again, it was very easy, and I would have got it on screen if it weren't for the fact that uh, Ian, for some reason, decided to stumble over the wall, and apparently I attacked the guy like that, but yeah, did it first time easily. So, in this compilation set, I did not get as much done as I wanted, and I'll explain why in a moment, but I managed to get the item requests from... Molly and Kieran. I also managed to complete Kieran's in the process, which was uh, to collect two burdock root. I completed the sixth rank of herb list, which was to pick up 15 species of herb. Finished off Gambler 4 by beating a poker player in Valentine. Uh, started up the second rank of Bandit by f when I uh, prevented people from robbing a stagecoach and brought it into the Emerald Ranch dude. And um, I managed to bring in a perfect alligator skin to the trapper and my other alligator skin is currently on the back of my new horse over there who is called Steven who is an American standard bread I think yeah he's definitely still got it on so I'll want that set in here and I'll see you guys when we're done so Arthur is it true about the bad luck what bad luck I just broke my pocket mirror and I remember me old ma saying that a broken mirror means seven years bad luck Seven years? We won't see seven years out. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. But if I find a mirror on my adventures, I'll bring it back for you. Thank you, Arthur. I'm surviving. That's what I like to hear. You behaving there, O'Driscoll? I'm not no Driscoll, sir. Sure. <laughs> How are the horses? Okay. Uh, I mean, well, but they could be better. I'm worried. They, they, they've been through a lot. If I had some burdock root, just a couple, uh, I could knock up a poultice, could keep them well, and cure some ailments. Burdock root? Yes, yes, that, 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 that works best. Okay. If I see some, I'll bring it you. Well, thank you, sir. <clears throat> to you very nice I'll find a good home for this don't spend it all at once see you again soon <laughs> ain't gonna see better than that all day Yes, come on. Hell, I'm out. Round.
Go wrong with that horse. Here's some of that burdock root you wanted. Oh, you actually... Well, thank you. This will make a good batch, all right. Okay. So the reason why I didn't get as much done in this episode as I wanted to was because, well, for one, I put on the I managed to find the second alligator that I needed. I wanted to get it done with like an hour and a lot of time. Came out to camp and found there's actually a mission between uh, Mr. Pearson and Sadie over there, and if I get closer, it immediately starts it. I can't um, hand in a thing to Pearson, and I don't really want to get rid of that alligator skin, so. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do that, and that is the mission I've got marked as number two in my list. The first one being Dutch's. So, like I said last week, um, well, my original plan for this week was to not do any missions and just start working on Chapter 3 side stuff. I am going to be working on a mission per episode again, but that should open up everything in camp, hopefully, including Dutch's item request, which I still need to do, and also be able to hand in the things to, for Mr. Pearson's item request. But, seeing as Micah is here to do some Five Finger Fillet, I think I'll get this camp activity done out and get it out of the way as well. That's cool. Okay. Sit down, my dearest friend, and show me just what you got. And forgive me if I slip and stab you in the face. <laughs> Don't think you've quite got a knife there, Micah. No, I there think the go. last time I played this was with Skinny and those boys and Strawberry. Shouldn't be hard. It's a small knife. Okay, I think you only need to win one game for it to count. I don't even think it adds to completion at all. It's just the thing. I remember when I was doing this back in Chapter 2 with um, Lenny, it just kept on going. Watch and learn. So I think you just need to get to a point where you need to buy in again if you want to carry on, which we want. So I don't know how long the mission's going to last, but that's definitely a priority for today. Not like many things, Micah. I put you to shame there. Right. Hey, why? That's easy. Yeah, I know what we're doing. Hope Five. It's <laughs> pitiful. Now, let me see. It's a little more awkward to do than AX because the buttons are right next to each other, but. Let's go and talk to Dutch. Oh, and now he's not. No, he's not got the mission available. What? You, what, what why would you do that, Dutch? Greetings, my boy. You okay. Hope you're working on a plan there. Always. Okay. Oh. Oh, and he's disappeared. <laughs> oh well. Uh, can I see Jose about? Um, no. Okay. The New South. How you doing, old friend? <coughs> um, it's funny. Us in and up down here. My daddy died in a field in Pennsylvania, fighting this lot. I ever tell you that? Many times. <laughs> I see I'm boring you, Arthur. Worrying me. We lost men back there. We have lofty goals, Arthur. We're trying to reform society to a kinder, truer, better way. Now, of course, there's going to be casualties. We're thieves in a world that don't want us no more. We are dreamers in an ever duller world of facts. Now, I'll give you that, but come on. We got the day. It's nice out. Mm -hmm. Old Jose says that there's a creek around here. I reckon it's full of fish. More fishing. Terrific. I mean, I knew. One of the optionals is to go fishing. 
Actually, I, I think that means must be an option. You don't look too rosy, old friend. I thought this warmer weather would... My days are looking good and long over Dutch. <laughs> Always green crushing and bubble bursting, you. Come on, Jose. Let's go fishing. All right, gentlemen. Let me show you how it's done. Okie dokie. Oh, there's a dream catcher there. I don't know if that counts as one. Yep. Might just be an ornamental piece, I guess. Why don't we just fish here? There's a whole lake of them. Because I need to get out for a bit. Me and the old guard. Before any of them back there, oh, there was a us. The curious couple and their unruly son. It feels good here. You did well finding that spot, Arthur. More Charles than me. It's like I can breathe again, thick and soupy as this air is. Might even do your whistling pipes some good, Jose. I was once in this country with Bessie. Ah, feels like a lifetime ago. It was a lifetime ago. But what a life we have lived, how well we have fought, especially both of you. I hope so. But now, when things are desperate, we have to stick with the plan. Make enough money, then find somewhere where nobody will find us. Where we don't have to hide. Uh, like where? I got some ideas hatching, but I need you with me, not against me. Both of you. Of course. Still, we do need money. So keep a low profile, especially in the local town. After Valentine, I want everyone on best behavior here. No trouble. But start turning over the soil and the rocks. See what turns up. Dutch, we've got to be discreet. Imagine what a slew of rich, simple tins there must be down here. Oh, this is perfect for you, Hosea. You'll be able to play them like a fiddle. Nothing would give me greater pleasure, but no buts. Not today. We fish and we enjoy the day. Oh, can't cause a fuss in roads. Looks like law up Let's ahead. Fun out of life. Play it cool. Uh, but I should also note that with Stephen, our new horse, uh, we're only level one bonding, so. Get into any situations is probably not going to be the greatest. Well, look what the cat drug in. I seem to have gotten myself in a spot to bother. Quiet back there. Let's is see it if we can't sort this out. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, well, look who it is. How are you, boys? Fine. This is quite some country you have here. We like it well enough. Hoagie McIntosh. At your service. Lee Gray. This is my deputy, Archibald McGregor. It's good to meet you. You a Scot? Partly. The best part. <laughs> of course. <laughs> now, tell me, sir, what did the silly, fancy fop back there do? Nothing too terrible, I trust. He was accused of running a gold mining investment scam. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure he wasn't. He is a magician. I know him. He's a fool. But he is not a bad fellow. Now, can we... Can we just... Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you! I, shit! I, the Anderson boys! I can't have more scandal! Oh, Allow geez. us to help, my friend. Arthur! Chase wanted man. Uh, and, and take Archibald with you. Just what I signed up for. Come on, big guy! Perhaps we can discuss the foolish magician. <laughs> Let's go! Perhaps we can the foolish magician. Keep your guns holstered. Right. We need them Anderson boys alive. Come on! Steven, be good to me. Alright, come on! I know we're early days of the pal book. Will you relax? We're not losing them. Faster, come on! What's your name, sir? Arthur. Arthur Callahan. Faster, Mr. Callahan, please. My neck is on the line here. I get it. I'm doing my best. It looks like the son of a bitch is gonna make it. 
You sure I can't just shoot him? No. Did I not say that? You said plenty. Come on. Come back to cop. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, oh, that must have hurt. <laughs> Leave him. Stay with that train. The train is slowing oh, down to go through the station. Now's our chance. See if you can get alongside the train. You're all right, boy. Okay. Yeah. Get alongside that flat carriage. Right, just push you think you can jump bit. on there? Stay by me. Because you ride like my grandmother. You are something else. Oh, you cop bastards. I didn't oh. do nothing. Oh. Leave me if I want to go. I'm not a cop. objective there because I know there's um I want to not get hit. I hate the not get hit objectives, they're so difficult. Son of a bitch. Bring him out here. Deputy. Sounded like quite a commotion. Is that him? I sincerely hope so. Old Anders Anderson. So what now? Take him in. Come on. Fine job. Well done. A pat on the back for me for stopping the train. There you go. You are a natural. All right, let's take him in. Follow me. What about the others? Oh, we'll round them up. Anders back there is the brains of the operation, and that's really saying something. You're the boss. That was mighty impressive, sir. I have to admit. I'd hazard a guess you've served the law yourself at some point. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Are you familiar with the area here? No, not really. On your right here, these tobacco fields? This is part of Caliga Hall, big estate belonging to the Gray family. Looks bone dry. Yes, we are in dire need of some rain around here, let me tell you. The Grays have lived in Caliga Hall for generations. Fine people. My family's been working for them for years. Sheriff Gray's the one I know best, of course, but they own half the businesses in town. Which town? Road, sir. You don't know it? Where we're headed right now. Ain't what it was before the war, but it has its charms. I'm sure you already know of the Braithwaites. Like I said, just got down here. Another big family in these parts. They have an estate west of here. Awful people, truly awful. They've been fighting with the Greys for as long as I can remember. Sounds like quite the place you got here. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's how the ongoing feud of Chapter 3. You end up working for both the Greys and the Braithwaites, and uh, probably all comes to a head. No oh, inroads roads already. However, when we pulled up, we are just outside St. Saint Denis, I was thinking, oh, for goodness sake, you kidding me? This is going to be a long way back. Which is not even finished yet, or even when we drop off Anderson, we've uh, got to go fishing with Hosea and Dutch. Here we are. Welcome to Rhodes. It's probably going to be a left is the Rhodes episode long mission. House. Very reputable saloon owned by the Gray family. We also have a general store, gunsmith, post office, train station, of course. What more do you need? Very little. Oh good, they're back. And that's your friend, right? Yeah. Nope. Okay, we're gonna stop just ahead on the right, outside the sheriff's office. Can you grab Anders off your horse and carry him in for me? All right. Go. Okay, this way. Hey, fellas. It turns out Mr. Gray! We got him. Very good. I told you Arthur would deliver. Man has a passion for justice. That's wonderful. So, uh, about my friend here? Your idiot friend is free to go. But no more trouble from you, partner. I promise you this was all just a big misunderstanding. However, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, I'll pretend to appreciate that. Mr. McIntosh, it has been a real pleasure. The mostly good citizens of Rhodes, we welcome you. Well, we're just honored to be here. And make your friend behave. We got enough trouble from some of the residents, old-timers who've gone sadly to seed and lost their dignity. How terrible. Come along now. I will keep this fellow on the straight and narrow. Well, come back and see us sometime soon. Excuse me, gentlemen. And Bo, these better be ugly rumors. Is it true you were seen talking to that wretched Penelope Braithwaite? I can't thank you enough. Where have you been? Around. And where are you staying? I'm renting a caravan. On the edge of town, behind the church. It's horrible, but no one comes looking. The whole town is trapped in this interminable feud between the two families. His lot, Grays, and Braithwaite's. Interesting. Two old plantation houses, and falling out of rebel gold, and marrying cousins, or not marrying. Arthur, That's Jose, you start poking around. See what you can find out about that. I have missed you, boys. I've heard. About bounty. Oh, there's been a price on my head for 13 years. It'll take a month to find us down here, and it seems like we can have a little sport. Well, they're good bounties. Where you hear this? Some fellas I met at a camp near the state line said there was talk of it in bars in the north and west for 500 miles. There was talk of super agents or some such. Super agents? <laughs> I'd love to meet one. It's just talk. I'm sure it is, but I could not tell you. Stay out of trouble. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I like Trelawney. He's quite a character. Okay, so these two plantation families. Arthur, you start sniffing around the Gray's place, see what the story is there. Yeah, I passed by it earlier with our friend, Archibald. Good. Hosea. You see what you can find out about these brave weights. All right. Thank you, Arthur. Quite a fishing trip. There's still time. I'm up for it. How about you, Arthur? Or have you had enough of the chase for one day? I'm gonna go fishing. Sure, why not? Great. Hosea, why don't you lead us to that spot you were talking about? Kind of like this place. Okay. Let's see if we can avoid any more excitement. Boy, he blessed us with some fine weather. He's making my head pound. Okie dokie. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much point because I'm not going to be able to get a... Uh, gold. Because of the All fact right, that gentlemen. I'm already... Follow me. Uh, screwed up with the fight. I am just, you know, Steven's taking his time. So how far is this creek? It's a 
bit of a ride still, and it's not a creek. It's the same lake we camped on, just a different pipe. It'll be worth it. I saw some big drum and sturgeon there. Should be rock bass, bluegills, perch, pickerel too. It's a good spot. We'll see if you're as good at catching fish as you are at catching criminals, Arthur. Trelawney owes me for that. Trelawney owes everyone for something, but his information is good. Plus, we are now ingratiated with the local law. I'd say it was a worthwhile diversion all around. So, you're going back to see that Sheriff Drake? Yeah, I don't see why not. They don't know who we are down here. He didn't seem the sharpest attacks. Neither did that deputy. If he thinks we can be useful to him, he can certainly be useful to us. A little hiding in plain sight. I feel like we're always hiding in plain sight. But sometimes more smartly than others. <laughs> Trelawney's like a bad penny. I'm not sure how good a magician he is, but he's certainly good at disappearing when he feels like it. Where does he go? Everywhere and nowhere, it seems. We wouldn't have got Sean back if he hadn't been weaseling around down that way, though. Hey, Dutch, remember that time you found him in the outhouse? <laughs> oh, yeah. We hadn't seen him in weeks. We stopped in some dead-end town in the middle of nowhere. Don't even yeah, remember the name. Much. You and Bill were off doing something, Arthur. <laughs> so, we pick up some supplies. I go to relieve myself. Open the door, and there's Trelawney, sitting there, newspaper in hand. Mr. Vandalin, I say, what the hell are you doing here? And he said, I could ask you the same thing. Now, if you wouldn't mind giving me a little privacy, I ate a rotten oyster. <laughs> hey, maybe there are actually a hundred Trelawneys. What a terrible thought. This well, is the spot. Partner. Down to the left there. Okay. I don't know how long this fishing section is going to be. But I know you have to do it with the gold. Yeah. I saw some boats around last buddies. time. It'd be good to get to deeper water. Can't go wrong. Yes, over there on the shore. Uh -huh. Behind you. Go on. I'm sure nobody would mind if we borrowed one of these. Come on. A little Grand Theft Belting. Can't beat it. All right. This looks like a fine vessel. Okay. Come on, Arthur. Let's get her in the water. Huh? No, no. I got a good feeling about fishing here. It's supposed to be some incredible sturgeon. Oh. Okay, here we go. Be uh. Uh. Let me row. You boys are too old for real labor no more. You're too dumb for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> You're still too quick for me, old man. Enjoy picking on children. Now take us to the deeper water and pray for good luck and stupid fish. What about stupid luck and good fish? That'll do, too. Head towards the middle of the lake. Good. All right. Good luck, gentlemen. Should really come here at dawn or dusk. That's when you catch the best fish. We should use a lake lure. That'll give us a much better chance of hooking something big like a sturgeon. Okay. What's wrong with good old worm? Oh, worms are good for tiddlers like bluegill and rock bass, but you'd have to be real lucky to catch a sturgeon with one. Lures it is, then. 
You heard the expert, Arthur. Let's bait up. Keep the lure moving slowly on the water so it looks like a little fish just asking to be eaten. They're nibbling. Got them. Got a nibble there, Arthur. Now reel him in, Arthur. Come on, come to daddy. What have we got here? Hey, look at this beauty. There you go. Well done, Arthur. They can grow a lot bigger than that. Well, it told me he once saw a monster lake sturgeon near the mouth of the river, just southwest of Saint Denis. Fifty pounder, he reckoned. <laughs> I would like to see that. Damn it, I lost him. Hey, Jose. Remember that time we sent Arthur out fishing? He came back with three beautiful bass. Not this again. I don't think I do. Oh, yeah. You do. He was maybe 20. 21. Walked in all full of himself. We had a big feast. Toasted him all night. This was 15 years ago. Oh, I remember now. <laughs> then, the next week, Arthur and I are at the market, and Fishmonger calls out, So how did you enjoy those bass? <laughs> Look, you can fish, or you can go drinking all day, rob someone, and buy some fish. <laughs> you hooked him? Nicely done, Arthur. Well, I nice. used to go fishing with this feller back in the day. Wesley, his name was. Real miserable bastard, but he loved to fish. We go out all the time. But one day, we were river fishing, when we see a funeral procession going over the bridge, and out of the blue, Wesley stands up, takes off his hat, bows his head. Then... He sits down, picks his rod back up, and carries on. Doesn't say a word. So I'm a little surprised and say, Wesley, that was nice of you. And he replies, well, felt I had to. After all, I was married to her for 30 years. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, dear God. I might swim to shore. Remember those big salmon I caught in Montana last year? We had a banquet planned that night until Copper went and stopped the lot. You never had control of that dog. Uh, he had some spirit, though. Never lost the puppy in him, right to the end. You know, I remember us saying how Blackwater was the furthest east we'd ever been. A as a group, I mean. Feels like the more we try to head west, the further east we end up. We had all those safe spots picked out to lie low in New Austin after the ferry job. I liked it there. Still open and wild the way it should be. Somehow the desert makes you feel closer to the sky. No point us trying to get back that way anytime soon. Pinkertons have patrols out all over tall trees and great plains. We saw when we went back for Sean. Well, look at us now, huh? It could be worse. Plans change. That's just how life goes. Yeah, this episode might end up going up all the time, Did guys. Did I ever tell you my mother's buried in Blackwater? Really? She is? Apparently so. I, uh, I only found out from an uncle of mine years later. Last I knew, she was still outside Philadelphia. I left home at 15 and didn't see her again. She and I didn't always see eye to eye. I wasn't always a very obedient child. I can only imagine. Still, I loved her in my own way, and she me in hers. <laughs> Somehow, even from the grave, she managed to have the last laugh. Fish on the line, Arthur.
Well done. All right, gentlemen, how much longer? Keeping that one, eh? Hey, I reckon we call it a day, fellas. Already? You ain't been chasing down outlaws. All right. Think we got a decent haul here. Pearson will be happy. Should we head back? We could keep the boat. Not too far back to camp from here. Good idea. Could be useful. What about the horses? Well, they'll find their way back. Just follow the shore south, Arthur. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you, boy. Now, Hosea. Yes. How about a song? Okay. Um, all right, I got one for you. I asked that gal to give me some. <laughs> <laughs> I asked that girl to give me some. She says, wait until the taters is done. I couldn't wait till the taters was done. I couldn't wait till the taters was done. Threw her on the floor and I knocked off some. I wish to God I passed her by. I wish to God I passed her by. Taters got burnt and so did I. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was pretty good. But you know, what song we should be singing? What? Well, look at us. Three mariners. Ah, of course. Well, we three four mariners till we come from the seas. We spend our lives in jeopardy while others live at ease. Shall we? Disdain, but we care for the merchant men who do our states maintain. To them we dance this round around around, to them we dance this round around around, and he that is a bully boy, come pledge me on this ground of 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 we should not let the folks back <laughs> That was a fun little excursion. What are you doing? All right, calm down. Calm down. All right. I think. I, well, I mean, we are going to be okay. I know. Well, I always know whenever I got you two by my side, things are going to be just fine. This place will be good for us. For now, anyway. I hope so. Well, I am going to take in the view. I'll give these fish to Pearson. Yep. Bronze. Uh, catch a return to jail at 5 inch 30. Yep. Some caution Arthur, now. Arthur, how you been? I've been real worried. What do you want? Don't be like that. All right, you know, just a, just a few bucks, and I'm short. Get lost. Well, well, I'll go try someone with a heart. You do that. Um. Captain, did they do oh. differently? Yeah, they're still getting angry. Um. Yeah, I've just realized something. Um, yeah, I've just thought that mission caused me to lose my crocodile, my alligator skin. 
So, I mean, that was kind of a... <laughs> kind of pointless, me getting that in the first place. Oh, 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 Dutch is having a cigar. Dutch is having a cigar. Dutch is having a cigar. Hurry up. Arthur, Arthur, Arthur. Hurry, 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 hurry. Gonna be fine, Dutch. Oh, that was fun today. Huh. You didn't have to chase that train. Okay, well, let's talk more later. No, let's right not on. talk more later. It's got a cigar off of... Arthur, you're doing my head in. Right, well, did what I could. Uh, so let's have a bit of progress uh, story. So obviously we've done our first mission in chapter 3. Gonna have to redo that. Obviously. Uh, let's save the game. See where that left us. Uh, so we have reached 44.7%, so 0.4%, that's not too bad. Mission, probably the challenges we did as well. Uh, yeah, this and the other. I so wish, like, look, don't use this there, doing exactly what I need him to do for the item request. Don't need to book it off now. Doesn't matter. Um, but, yeah. Anywho, and the next episode we will be doing mission number two, which is dealing with the little argument going on with Pearson and Sadie over there. And if we've got enough time, we might uh, check out Rhodes a little bit more. I don't know. But that's what we're going for today, but I want to thank my amazing patrons. My five Pampas patrons are Ron Hyler and Ever the Snake. You can find links to their channels as well as my other three Pampas patrons in the description down below. And on screen, you'll see credits by one Pampas patrons. Thank you so much, everyone. It's truly appreciated, and it goes a long way to help the channel, so I do thank you a lot for that. And if you wish to join those patrons, you can find a link in the description down below to my Patreon page. But you don't have to do that, because at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to like and then subscribe, and also be sure to share the video. And I will see you guys in episode 34. Everything changes. Nice.